to Katrina Shanks. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister of Social Development and Employment, who will be better off under the Future Focus Welfare Package announced yesterday? Honourable Paula Bennett. Mr Speaker, New Zealand will be, but all of those 345,000 beneficiaries will benefit from the legislated CPI changes. There are 28,000 beneficiaries who would be better off as a result of abatement changes. 14,000 sole parents are working part-time now. 9,100 invalids are there. 1,600 widows. 3,200 superannuants and veterans. Pensioners. In addition, there are three million taxpayers better off knowing they are getting the support to those who really need it. Katrina Shanks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Minister. How much better off will those beneficiaries be? The Honourable Paul Mr Bennett. Speaker, the CPI increase will be up to $5.34 a week. These combined changes mean a widow working part-time could be up to $9.89 better off a week and a sole parent working 16 hours could be up to $19.34 a week better off. And this doesn't include the extra they'll get in wages. Carmel Cipolloni. Does she agree with her ministerial colleague, Peter Dunn, who said children could become collateral damage in her welfare reforms? And will she give a guarantee to this House that no child will suffer as a consequence of her changes? Honourable Paula Bennett. Mr Speaker, so the, abatement, so the changes that we're making in sanctions mean that instead of previously under Labour what happened, there was a 100% cut-off on benefits if people were not re- meeting their obligations. So there was no in-between step. It was a 100% cut-off. So if you weren't meeting your obligations and you could lose 100% of your benefit, we're putting another fair step in there that says they could lose half. We're also making an absolute guarantee that no one on the DPB would lose more than half of their benefit and they can still get the accommodation supplements and those extras that go on top of it. But Mr Speaker, actually it's parents that need to take responsibility for their children. The obligations are not onerous and it's them that need to step up and make sure that they are there. Point of order, the Honourable Darren Hughes. Mr Speaker, a, a very long and interesting answer but not one reference to the Honourable Peter Dunn, which was the basis of the question. Order. Had his colleague asked just that question, I would have asked the Minister to answer it, but the Carmel Sepp only asked two parts of the question. The Minister focused on the second part, which she's perfectly entitled to do. Katrina Shanks. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question. When was the abatement level last changed? Honourable Paula Bennett. Mr Speaker, the amount beneficiaries can earn before the benefit is abated hasn't been changed since it was increased by the last national government in 1996. So, obviously, it wasn't a priority for Labour through all of the good years where they chose not to actually return some money to people's own pockets. Question number three. Order. 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 I just say to members, please, a little, it's been very noisy today. I realise it's uh, an issue that is, you know, arouses quite a lot of uh, feeling. So I accept a bit of noise, but please, a little respect. Uh, the Honourable Ruth Dyson, question number three. Our question